Hello viewers, Flash Motorsport here and welcome to Mid-Ohio. It's been a bit of a rough week here at the uh, Forza Racing Sanctuary where we had incidents like this. Coming around to overtake the Honda Civic, I'll go around on the outside. As you can see the track is nice and wide, although the player to my left hand side does not seem to think so. I'm trying to stay on the black stuff and this happens, I'll go meet the wall. Somehow this is still a thing in the race. I can't complain, I mean I overtook that car, it worked out brilliantly and I didn't get a warning for it. People diving in and off the track, which is lucky I didn't miss that. I get this person cutting me off, braking early, and then I rear end them. I don't get a penalty for that one though, or this one. But in the next corner coming down here, I get the car to my right hand side, pushing me off the track a little bit. I get a penalty for that one though. Well done Forza, your system is working perfectly. Coming down to the next corner, we're met with a weird scenario where none of the cars wanted to turn and we are greeted with sticky wall physics. So as we come around there, we do 65 miles per hour, all of us go off track and I hit the car in front. I have no idea why, I mean in reality the angle of that car should have breezed along that wall and I get a penalty for it too. So heading back to mid-Ohio, the idea of this race is going to be, I'm going to start at the back of the pack, or as far back as I can because of the grid ordering system, I don't know how it works and work my way up and give it my all and see how far to the front I can get. We start off in P14 position and we're going to quickly make a change of that because RCMs doesn't get the best of starts off the line so we're already in P12. Can't grumble at that already. Coming around on the left hand side, we're going to take about 75 miles per hour in third gear. You can use the curb to help you rotate the car. Brake hard down to second gear. This corner is quite tight and as you can see it's quite chaotic on the first corner. There's a few people everywhere, there's already a Honda in front of me going off track. As you see on the left hand side, there's a stand full of people. Just after the stand, between the two stands is your next braking point for this corner here. You can take it in second gear, I take it in third gear to try and reduce my tyre wear because although it is only a short race, tyre wear is quite prominent on this track as it's very fast corners and the camera road does create a lot of wheel spin. Sometimes it's better to be in a high gear and have a slower exit and save your tyres overall than it is to have a quicker exit and smoke up your wheels. Coming down here, pop down to second gear over the kerb and start accelerating out the other side. As you can hear there is a lot of wheel spin still being generated by being in second gear so sometimes it might be better in third. Breaking at a 200 marker down to third gear, coasting round this corner here. You want to start accelerating and then as soon as you come over the brown hill, brake really hard down to second gear. Let the car coast around and start accelerating halfway around the kerb and cut this corner on the left hand side. As we cross over the start and finish line, we are now in P7. So we started in P14, we're now in P7, so that's half the job done in one lap. Now the next challenge is to overtake Marek because uh, I am being a bit quicker than them. And it's just trying to find a place you can overtake on this track without causing the collision or rubbing or anything like that. It's actually quite hard when you think about it because the corners are taken very quickly. You do try and maximise the use of the track. Problem I'm finding is I can't get out of a corner fast enough or faster than Marek in front to an extent that I can basically come up alongside them in the next corner. And I can't take the outside line because they're going so much quicker than me through the inside that they're breaching over to the outside and I don't want to be rammed off the track either. So I'm really hoping for them to make a mistake or me to apply enough pressure onto them to make a mistake and me be able to capitalise on that position. As you can see the pack in front are getting away and this is starting to get to a position where I need to make a move and I've decided this is my move now. I'm going to make a move and then I pretty much get cut off to an extent. I have to back out. As you see I was pinched up against the wall and if I didn't back out I would have been against the wall and probably would have been at the back of the pack again. And it's things like that that are quite irritating really because you've got to give people space to race. So for that reason I've taken things into my own hands here. I am going to use the best tactic in this track there ever has been and that is basically the pit. You get so much more grip in the pit, you got the curb to your side and that is that position gained. So now it's just a case of catching up to the car in P5 which is Caramel Turtle 94. I've raced Caramel Turtle 94 before, I'm pretty sure I recognise that name. I mean it's not something you can forget really. Just imagine seeing a caramel turtle, right? And you just go up and start licking it. <laughs> yeah, I've got some weird thoughts that goes on in my head. Anyway, we're coming down here. We are all catching up to them. 2.1 seconds away, 2 seconds away. Luckily enough, they are being held up by the person 3 cars ahead or 2 cars ahead. And I am making big gains on the person behind me. See, I'm already 2 seconds away 
from Marek behind me. So that was the kind of gap they were holding us up by. So luckily I managed to get the overtake done. Just got to try and find within three laps another 1.7 seconds. I know I'm not going to be able to catch up to witty ace 15 in P1. They are nine, they're almost, well, over eight seconds ahead. Coming up to nine seconds ahead, which is quite a lead. And unless they make a mistake, and by the looks of it, a player in P2 as well make a mistake, there's no chance of catching that up. Painfully, I am now 1.9 seconds away from Caramel Turtle, so I'm going to use the pit entrance to my advantage again and claw back a few temps here, down the second gear, coming around this corner as tight as you can, and accelerate halfway around. Breathing it back into life into third gear to try and reduce that wheel spin and try and save the tyres for the last lap because I've noticed in the last lap your tyres are knackered. Breaking between the stands, down to third gear, coasting it round and accelerating again, keeping to your left hand side. Breaking down to second gear, rubbing that in the curb and keep to your left hand side as you come out the corner. Stay under black stuff of the track that's being re tarmacked. It's going to have better grip and come in out the corner in third gear. Over the brow of the hill, cut in this corner on your right hand side and bring it over to your left hand side. Breaking down to second gear as you go over the crest of this hill, you're going to have some wheel spin again. So sometimes it might be best, like I just did, go into third gear. Reduce the horsepower a little bit, but have much better grip on the way out. Breaking down the third gear, stay on the darker part of the track again. And as we come over here, start breaking some more down the second gear and try again to stay on the darker part of the track. It's quite convenient you have this uh, retarmacked part of the track. You do get much better grip and it's quite a good uh, little marker for your racing line. As we're coming over the start and finish line, brake just before Cooper tires and I'm going to use the pit exit again. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for using the pit exit, but if it's there, you might as well use it. Coming over here, we have gained a position from the black car. Got a bit nervous there because they did come back on the track and did look like they wanted to take the whole track up. But ride hard, a 5306 didn't take us out so thank you for that buddy that was a very kind of you breaking into third gear over the curb we go now we just got to try and get past this caramel turtle as you can see they are breaking quite substantially throughout the corner so i do think the tires are on their last legs which means i can capitalize on that because i have been tire saving here and there not a lot but enough to be able to make a push on this car here and basically keep the pressure on hopefully they make a mistake I'm going to put my car in unfavorable conditions, like not the optimal part of the track, just to make them look in their mirror to see what on earth is he doing. Is he going to make a move? Is he pushing me? Just to keep them not looking ahead, but more looking behind me and just be completely awkward about the whole situation. Coming around in a second gear, you can see my front left and tire has now minor wet, which is a quite a worrying thing, but hopefully they're not as worn as the car in front. I'm going to start using a pit exit again to make this overtake work and I'm going to cut through here they do use the pet exit but not as tight as I do breaking down the second gear taking a little bit wide I did break a little bit late through here I can hear them on my right hand side and accelerate out of the corner and hopefully outpower them through the corner looking out your stands on the left hand side again breaking in between the crowd down to third gear coasting it round Having a little dab on the brakes here and there just to try and keep the nose down and have better grip overall throughout the corner as now both of my tyres are worn. I just got to try and catch up to FTC Senna 822 now which is 3.5 seconds ahead. As you can see from the battling and everything that's been going on they have made quite a substantial gain so I wonder if they're on hard tyres. I mean it would be the right kind of choice because on this last lap you are at a disadvantage but throughout the whole race they were quite far ahead as well. But they were holding people up throughout the race. You can see there is a large gap from P2, uh, 1 and 2 to P3. So it does beg the question, were they defend like anything and on hard tyres? Or have they uh, just been quite lucky to get away from the car behind me? Anyway, we're going to cross over the start and finish line. They're going to show off and we get P4 position. Before we move on to our next race, if you're enjoying what you see here, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We are now at Indianapolis, where we start off in P8 position and I have at the top of my screen a poor network apparently. We have already gained one position so now we're in P7. I'm going to go keep over to my right hand side and see if I can use a bit of slipstream to my advantage here. You see the cars are a little bit twitchy all over the place, that's probably down to the poor network. Breaking down to second gear, I get battered about a bit, probably because the apex syndrome kicked in. Although there is a car there on that corner, I must still hit that apex. Like, you know, I don't turn invisible, I don't turn into Casper the Ghost, 
why still aim for a position that has already been filled by somebody else? You know, it's just not going to work out. Anyway, coming down here, you can see a bit more carnage is happening behind in the mirror very faintly. You want to keep on your right hand side looking for the 150 marker. After the 150 marker, you want to start breaking between the 100 and 150, about 125, down the third gear. Come over to your left hand side. You want to take this S bend as straight and true as possible. Keep over to your left hand side after the exit of this corner and bring it back over and rub that curb on your right hand side. Pushing it out to the left hand side of the track and accelerating all the way out the other side. As we come up to the banking of the outer loop, you want to get yourself up to the wall on the left hand side. As soon as the tenth start, that is your first breaking point. Down the second gear, over the curb we go and come back over to your right hand side. And then back down the second gear, rubbing that in the curb on the left hand side and then start accelerating out. You are going to scrub up your tyres. Um, it is quite a corner to come out of. Be mindful of coming through here because uh, if you're going through too quickly, you will end up cutting the track and you will get a penalty for it. The uh, margins are quite narrow and it's easier to understeer to the outer banking of the wall than it is to keep the car under control and be faster. Looking out for the 150 marker on your left hand side, breaking down the second gear again. I get hit on the left hand side because the track's not wide enough for some reason. Luckily enough though, the person stays behind me and I think in all fairness, it was a genuine mistake um, due to the fact that they didn't capitalize on that and I think they would stayed behind on purpose. Now it's easy for me to be critical and call that person every name under the sun, but thinking about it, if you look outside that box, Put in other factors such as their camera angle, their viewpoint, things like that. You know, if they were in the interior car view, would they have seen me on their right hand side? Um, they may not have been using headphones, so they may have not heard me on the right hand side. But if you go back to the camera view again, it's all right saying, oh, well, you can use those proximity markers. But sometimes due to the color, if you're in the car, you just don't see it. You don't really notice it's there. And sometimes you don't notice it moving around or sometimes it doesn't actually work. Mistakes do happen, and instead of being frustrated about it, because it's easy to get frustrated about it, just try and think of it from their perspective. Did they purposely want to smash you off the track? You know, from my experience, about six out of 10 drivers really don't want to, it's a genuine accident. I mean, don't get me wrong there, I'd say the other four out of 10 are genuine rammers, like, you know, you seriously have nothing better to do. But let me know down in the comments below what you think about what I'm saying. I mean, I try and stay positive and proactive about the situation. I think outside the box, if that was me in that situation, would I have done that same mistake? And if the answer is yeah, then it's just a mistake. You know, it happens. Just be chill, be happy, and long as you're smiling, that's all that matters. As you can see, though, I am in position two. 1.6 seconds away from the car in front. Now, I've got to say, Old Man Racer J is quite a fast driver. They are in the link, I do believe, which is, I would say, quite on par with the MG. I do wonder if the link handles better than the MG. The MG is going to be a tiny bit faster in a straight line, but the link is a car that you do have to worry about if when used correctly. But they are pretty quick. You can see they are making quite a substantial gain on me. Now two seconds ahead. But lucky enough, player in position three is now 1.5 seconds away from me so i am creating my own little bubble where the one in front is getting away and the one behind is also getting away so i can't really grumble like that as we look for the tents on the left hand side start breaking down the second gear rub that in the curb on your right hand side bring it back over to your right hand side and then hold it in second gear as we break down for this next corner and accelerate out the other side again be mindful of the understeer as you can see the track does tighten up before the exit and if you cross this triangle here just like that you saw on the floor if you cross that too early you will get a penalty for it so be mindful of that i was literally very close to the penalty marker looking at your left hand side for the 150 marker breaking down to second gear and rub the curb on your right hand side i took it in a little bit too early there but luckily enough it's all right again in second gear around the other side so accelerating out of this corner Take it as wide as you can and then start breaking back down to second gear as we come through this corner. I do take it in third gear to try and save the tyres again. Rub over those two curves, go as straight as you can to maximise the speed coming down this back straight. Looking out on your right hand side as we're coming under the bridge for the 150 marker. After the 150 marker, start thinking about braking. 
about to 100 markers a little bit too late as you can see now it's a bit brave so you're looking about the 120 to 125 zone through this s as tight as you can try and keep the car straight better than what i did and pushing the car a little bit to try and catch up to the guy in front which obviously did my detrimental issue i lost the second um so pushing the overdriving the car and things like that uh, basically uh, did not benefit me whatsoever there breaking down the second gears i'm still pushing a little bit too much take the corner a little bit too wide and basically costing me time overall rather than making me time the person in front does have a 0 0.8 second penalty now but i've only got one lap really to find 2.7 seconds but i have gained 2.7 seconds from the player in p3 which shows you how much quicker i was to that player behind and this is where you struggle to overtake sometimes because you know you're quicker but you just can't get the right time in the right place to overtake and you don't want to overtake by using violence so you gotta be uh tactful and luckily enough i managed to get the move done earlier coming around here like i say down the third gear we are wearing on a near side front tire or the left hand front tire um it has moderate tire wear the one on the other side will not be far behind and look at that split literally perfect split <laughs> never had it was all zeros before there we go the right hand tire has now gone down to moderate wear breaking down to third gear i'm trying to save the tires a little bit as well as try and keep a bit of the speed up i've got half a lap to go and i want to try and capitalize on the car in front as you can see their tires will probably be in the same situation if not worse because they are pushing more than me they are now 2.3 seconds ahead and it's going to be touch and go whether they make a mistake or not and i'm hoping they make a mistake coming over here rubbing that curb going as fast as i can to try and catch up to them breaking down the second gear going as tight as you can through the corner accelerating out as early as possible rubbing that curb on the right side to maximize the track and accelerating out the corner and i just don't have it but i did gain did gain a little bit they're 2.1 second away from me twitching 2.1 2.2 but overall i came p2 at the end of that race thank you all for watching and i shall see you all next time